everyone. Welcome to the Nails Magazine Facebook page where we are going to do a Facebook Live with Valentine's Day nail design. We'll give everyone just a few minutes to join us and get everything ready to go for you. If you're following along, just grab some of your favorite art tools, brushes, maybe a stylus or a dotting tool, whatever you have handy. Hello and thanks for joining us. Sophia and Daisy Ann, hi back. Just give people a couple more seconds. Lucia, hello. While we're waiting for people to join, let's get a few nails ready for some design by just throwing some color on. You can use your favorite gel polish. I'm gonna put one coat on. One of the things to make your nails look a little more fancy in less time is to quick give them a background. Just one thin coat of your favorite gel polish and toss it in your lamp to cure. Let's go ahead and make up a couple of those. You can use any color that you like. I'll do one red and one kind of a mauve. That way you can see some variety. Hey Della, thanks for joining from the UK. Let's get started with some basic ideas while those are curing. Grab something to practice on. It can be something plastic. You can use one of your uh, plastic backings from a form or anything like that that would be handy for you. Where do you get Zoom in just a little bit for you guys. Where do you get your gloves? Uh, the gloves are actually called Pink Pearl, that's the name of them, and I get them from CJ at Center for Beauty. Just to keep things simple, I'm going to use a little plastic back pad and put some polish on it so that I can show you, uh, that doesn't show up very good against that white, does it? Let's use a ring thing. Let me know if the glare gets to be too much. Put a little bit of white in the ring thing. And this technique is gonna work with regular polish or your favorite gel polish, whatever method you prefer. One of the staples for Valentine's Day is gonna be hearts. And if we try to literally draw a heart, unless you're very, very artistically talented, it's pretty complicated to draw a heart with polish. Uh, one way to simplify it is going to be to use a stylus. And depending on the size of the heart you want, you can adjust the size of your stylus. Let's start off with some really tiny hearts. Dip your stylus just in the surface of the polish Go on the nail and make a dot. Dip your stylus in the polish again, make another dot, and then draw a V to connect the two dots. Then you have a very basic heart. If you're using gel polish, you can clean the heart up just a little bit to make the tip more pointed. If you would like to do a bigger heart, 
you can come in with a larger stylus. Just dip it in your polish, make a dot, dip it in again, another dot, and connect the dots. Clean it up if you want to. If you want to get a little larger, you're going to need to make bigger dots. So you can set your stylus down and draw a circle to make the dot bigger. And then do the same thing right beside the other one. Still do the V to connect the dots. And then you're gonna need to go back in and grab just a little more gel polish to fill it in. Now you've got some really easy hearts, which can be the foundation for any of your designs. Do we have some questions? Um, yeah, um, someone said, will we be able to watch this after you go live? Yes, the live video will still be available on the Nails Magazine Facebook page. Where do you get the ring paint holder? Oh, you can get the ring thing from Koopa. Koopa Incorporated carries these. Are we good on questions at the moment? Yeah. Brilliant. Holly, what are you in town for? I am in town for ISSE. It's the Long Beach show. And I will be there teaching on Saturday and Sunday and attending on Monday. We're also having an informal get together in the nail spot on Sunday. We would love to see you guys there. There'll be some info on my Instagram, on the Nails Magazine Facebook, and on my Facebook fingernail fixer. Let's take our design up a notch and play a little bit with how you can create fast, easy backgrounds. This is a micro glitter. I'm just going to touch the brush in and kind of dust some red. This is a brighter red. And notice I'm really placing it sporadically. It's not in exact specific spots. I'm not trying to do an ombre or anything fancy. I'm trying to put it on there really quick. Then a little bit of silver, again, pretty splotchy. I'm not even taking the time to rub it in yet. I'm just sticking her on there. Then a darker red for some more contrast. Trying to fill in any spots that I haven't already stuck the glitter. Then just burnish, which is just a fancy word for rub it in circles. Burnish the entire nail. And this gives you a really easy, simple background. What's the point of having a background? The background is just gonna give your design a little something to pop off from. It's gonna give it a little more visual texture. Another way that we can add visual texture is with transfer foil. Just kinda splotch some onto your gel polish the way that you normally would apply your transfer foil with the gel polish that you use. And are you using gel or regular polish? This happens to be gel polish that's been cured. And it's just one coat because we're essentially making the background out of the foil instead of out of the gel polish. And notice that I just splotched that on and hit the missing spots and this is now going to be the background for a Valentine's design. When you have a background, you wanna make sure that you come over your background with either a layer of top coat or if the gel polish you use happens to have a color that is very, very sheer and almost clear, you could go over it with that layer of clear. Having that layer clear protects your background, so if you need to fix your design or edit your design in some way, you have the ability to do that without ruining the background. It also adds a little more visual texture to have the dimension of that top coat in between the background and the finished design. See how fun that is, all splotchy versus being on there in a specific way? Let's throw those into here and then talk about some more basic building blocks for our design work. Coming back to this one with the hearts. 
Something that really makes your design look more finished can be swipes or swirls. Depending on how proficient you are with a striping brush, if you feel like a striping brush is a little overwhelming, you might try a longer detail brush. When you're working with your detail brush or a striping brush, the trick is to get polish up onto the brush and then have it on the brush versus having a dot of polish at the end of brush. See how there's a dot of the polish at the end of the brush? That's gonna make it so that I can't get a clean, thin line. Just even that out so that the gel polish is worked all the way up the brush. Set your brush down using a very gentle touch, bend the hairs just slightly, and pick it up as you move. This is gonna give you a nice thin little swipe that can accent your design. And we're still not really doing anything very complicated, but it really adds to the look. Because I'm cleaning the brush out completely, I want to go back into the gel polish for each line. In addition to lines, dots can also really accent your nail. Maybe you come under the line with some trailing dots. Maybe you go between the lines. Maybe you just have dots with your heart. There are several different ways you can accent your Valentine just using some simple swipes with the brush and some dots. Let's take a look at one of our backgrounds. A lot of us have gotten used to being able to do stamping. It's a quick, easy way to add really detailed design work to the nail. Let's get out a Valentine's stamping plate, put some regular polish on it, and everyone has a little bit different technique to stamping. The polish I use is a really quick drying, so I like to go ahead and put it over the entire stamping plate that I'm gonna use. Swipe it, pick it up, position it, and apply. And as you can see, you still get the stamped design. The beauty of having the background is it really makes the design pop that much more. By the time you had done that to all 10 fingers, you would be able to take your top coat and go over the polish because it's gonna be dry since it's such a thin layer. And just quick cleaning off my stamper with a lint roller. What's your advice on how to get a good stamp? Because I know some people have issues with that. So stamping can be pretty challenging. I know when the stamping initially became a big thing, I tried it a couple times and it didn't work well for me and I'm kind of like, oh, this is stupid, I don't like it. And then it kept getting more and more popular and people were asking me for videos and I'm like, fine, I guess I'm gonna have to learn how to do it. So let me give you some tips that will help make your life a little bit easier when it comes to stamping. I'm gonna clean the plate off and you wanna make sure you're always cleaning your plate with something that is not oily. So a nail cleanser or a pure acetone, anything like that is going to work well. The other trick is to work with a polish that you're comfortable with. If you're working with a fast drying polish, you need to do your stamping steps very, very quickly. If you're not enjoying working quickly and you want to take your time, then you want to work with a polish that dries a little slower so that you have time to pick it up with the stamper. The next thing is going to be to make sure everything is right within your reach. You don't have to run out and grab it out of the drawer, etc. Have the cap off the stamper ready to go, have the nails sitting right in front of you, and the plate. If you're using a fast drying polish, I find that it's really helpful to just cover the entire area that you want to pick up with a thin layer of polish. 
swipe it immediately and pick it up immediately. And as you can see, and where did you get this plate? This specific plate is a bundle monster. And the nice thing about picking up on a larger stamper is you can customize and pick up parts of the design while it's still wet. Preferably you wouldn't let it dry like I just did. So let's do that again and I'll customize it right away. The trick really is to not dinking around. If you go really slow, it's gonna be difficult because you're putting such a thin layer of polish in the plate the polish is actually gonna dry in the plate instead of picking it up and having it on the stamper. Once you get it on the stamper, it's gonna pull itself off onto the nail. I was told you have to have a rough surface to stamp on gel nails if you're going to put a top coat on. Is that true? Personally, I always stamp right into the sticky layer, so I've not found that to be an issue. It could be something that makes other people more comfortable to have that work surface that way. So it, I would say it's not truth or untruth, it's personal preference. Can you repeat what stamper you're using? This happens to be from Lauren. It's a, the Wildflowers Clear Stamper. So here I've just taken off any excess to make it so that it would actually fit a nail. So if we just flip this around real fast. You can see, whoops, it doesn't want to stick to my glove. Let's stick it to this guy. And here the white doesn't show up because that's not what we planned, but do you see that it still comes cleanly off the stamper onto the nail? Does that help with stamping? Another trick for stamping would be to use a stamping gel, something that's specifically designed for stamping. That can be easier to pick up because you don't have that worry about it drying on you like you do with the polish. Take just a little bit of stamping gel. And with this, you don't have to color it over the whole design. You can just put a little line Yes, the ring palette you can get from Koopa Incorporated or Koopa Inc. What angle do you swipe? It's pretty much a 45 degree angle. So I generally will hold the card so that my thumb lays along the whole thing so that I get a smooth swipe all the way across. And the stamping gel picks up really consistently every single time, nice and easy. So if you're struggling picking up with polish, if you find that you can't seem to get the rhythm, definitely a stamping gel is going to be your friend. If you mess up on the sticky layer after stamping, what's your trick to take it off and doing it again without messing up your nail? When you are working in the sticky layer, what you can actually do is take a little bit of alcohol and clean the sticky layer off and the messed up design comes off with it. That's why I protected my background with either a clear gel polish or a top coat so that when I do mess up, I've got the ability to wipe that off. And you wanna use something that is completely lint free to wipe that off so that you don't leave little fuzzies that are gonna stick up out of your stamping. Any other questions? Where do you get inspiration for your holiday nail art like is it just as easy as the kind of stamper you have or do you holly like go somewhere specifically to get inspiration generally i will try to pay attention to what clients are wearing are they wearing jewelry that fits the holiday have they brought in any shirts you know christmas sweaters are a huge source of inspiration yeah. also greeting cards it's really fun to walk down the greeting card aisle and kind of look at what the greeting cards are doing. Are they metallic? Are they glittery? Have they mixed matte and shiny? Like what's going on with greeting cards? Another one of my favorites is wrapping paper. You can always find really interesting wrapping paper for a lot of holidays. And just kind of checking out store displays. 
to see what types of things they're using for designs and basically looking at everything with your nail eyes to get ideas. Someone said wildflowers has the stamping gel or the stamper? Both. You can get stamping gel and the stamper at wildflowers. And if you would like, I can go back through later and put links in the comments for all of you. Would this work with any name brand stamping tools? Yes. Yes, all of the stamping tricks are gonna be the same. It's really personal preference on the specific tools. Some people like a smaller stamper, some people prefer a big stamper. It really is personal preference. Let's come back to do some design work on our foil background. Having some contrast of a really dark color and a really light color. I'm also gonna come in with kind of a medium color. And let's have a little bit of fun with this. Hearts. We'll start off with a dark. Do the dots. The V. And I'm just gonna widen out the V a little bit to poof my heart up. A little bit bigger heart. Remember you can just roll your dot around to make a bigger circle for the two halves of the heart. And then draw your V and fill it in. If you accidentally get your circles together like this, they got a little bit too close, you can use a stylus when you're working with gel polish and come back in and separate them a little bit. What's your favorite brand of stamping plate? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, probably, can I do my top three? Yes, please. <laughs> my top three plates would probably be Wildflower stamping plates, yours out of the UK, and Bundle Monster. Once we have the dark hearts, we kind of want to make those pop out just a little bit more. Let's take some white. Anytime you have something dark, highlighting it with something light makes it pop out. I'm just going to do a little swipe kind of along the side to highlight the edges of the heart. Same thing down here. You'll notice the white blends in just a little bit. This is where the medium comes in. What brushes are you using? This is a little nail art set of brushes from Atwood. They have little screw-on lids so the little hairs don't get ruined when they're in my case, which makes me really, really happy. And they're teeny tiny. Notice I'm just kind of streaking the medium through the white so that we still have the highlight from the white. Now let's add some dots for fun. Start off with some white. Dot the medium right in the middle of the white or off to the side whichever way works out. You could also come in and add some dark. So let's have the dark coming up out of the top. So the dots really and the lines can just add to your design a little bit. What types of Valentine designs do you have questions about or have you been struggling with? Thanks for the link, Andrea. Andrea posted a link to the Atwood Industries website for the brushes. And this is the little thing. And it's a set. See the fun little screw on lids? Do 
Do we have questions about certain designs? Freehand lace. Freehand lace. Whew. Man. All right. <laughs> So freehand lace is essentially going to be lots and lots of tiny circles. And depending on how proficient you are at drawing with a brush, you could do it with a brush or a stylus. I'm going to go ahead and show you with both so that you can get an idea of which way would be the easiest for you. I'm gonna get a little bit more dark gel polish. And let's start off doing it with a brush. Again, I like to use a long detail brush. Come in, roll it in, and make sure that it's not a lot on the brush. And start with little circles. Center in the previous circle. And it's not really a perfect circle. It's kind of a bent triangle, kind of a rounded triangle, I suppose. And you're just using the center of the one before it as the guide. Then there's generally some larger loopy pieces. So maybe we wanna add a design, set the brush down and draw a parenthesis. Set the brush down again and draw a parenthesis going back against it. Do that from the centers. And the nice thing about doing it with gel polish is if you had to, you could go in and clean up anything that bothered you. Let's say we wanna do this with a stylus instead of with a brush. You can just take the stylus and clean up any little spots that you feel like don't quite work or you went out of bounds or out of lines or anything like that. Let's do some of the circles with a stylus instead of with a brush for something different. I'm gonna use a really fine point to the stylus and just kind of swirl it in the gel polish so that I've got some on the point. And then the same as you did before, you're just making your circles it just might be a little easier to make them with the stylus than it was with the brush. You do sometimes have to go back over with the stylus. If people didn't have these exact tools, what would be the next best thing or what would they be able to improvise with? When I first started doing nails, I did designs like this with toothpicks. So I would have a little box of toothpicks in my drawer in the salon and I used toothpicks. I firmly believe in your tools paying for themselves before you have them. So I did designs with toothpicks until I could afford stylus. And then once I had a stylus, I did designs with the stylus until I could upgrade to several sizes of stylus. You can use the back of a plastic back pad if you don't have a palette. And there are all kinds of nail art brushes all over the place. So depending on what's easier for you, you can try using the stylus to make the circles or you can try using the brush. And just depending on the style of lace that you want, I would strongly suggest Googling lace and looking at the patterns so that you can use that as your inspiration. Let me quick pull that up and we'll find one. So 
photos of lace. And then if you just hit images, here we have some pattern ideas and that can give you something to go by. This one's kind of a simple and you don't have to take the whole thing. You can zoom in and maybe you just wanna do like the flower part. Maybe you wanna only wanna do the lines, but having something to guide you is definitely going to be very, very helpful. Let's say we kind of want to add the flower pattern to this. I'm going to use a brush because for this type of work, I find it to be easier for me personally. And start on that flower pattern. Just doing exaggerated parentheses to make the circles of the flower. And then looking at the flower pattern on the lace, it has little filled in patterns inside each of the petals. In the very center, it's so tiny that it's gonna be much easier to just take the stylus and make a bunch of little dots to make it look like tiny lace inside of there. Then you can take your brush and make the petals just a little thicker. To match how the lace looked in the photo, it had just a little thicker outline on the flower petals. Does that answer your questions about lace? Once we completed this flower, we would do the next one over all the way across and then finish out the piece of lace on the edge. Inside the petals was a tiny lace pattern. So I'm just gonna make some tiny little circle-like pieces. Making sure the brush is really cleaned off and there's just a tiny bit of the gel polish, preferably without the fuzzy. Lisa says, yes, thank you, this is Hofstra. Perfect. And yes, the design is Lacey Bob. Well, that worked out handy. <laughs> so really there's not a Sorry. wrong way to do lace. What it's... are you teaching at ICE? I have a couple different classes on Saturday. It's social media, and I'm actually gonna help you set up a social media calendar for the year. Then on Sunday, the class is color theory and skin tone with superior skills. So it's showing you how to use color theory and skin tone to make even your normal polishes look better than everyone else's. Any other Valentine style designs that you guys need some help with? Gel polish doesn't dry out, it's mixture with polish and gel, right? Basically, some gel polishes are mostly gel, some are a combination of the two. And the key is that until you put them in the lamp, they're not dry. So you can play with them indefinitely, you can clean them up and all of that fun stuff. Other questions? Yeah, do you guys need me to finish out the lacy flower design to help it make a little more sense? You would just come in and repeat the flower. Side by side, just like it is on a piece of lace. Can we take some classes online too that help with designs? Absolutely, there are all kinds of classes online. If you tune in on Nails TV, they have several videos with design ideas. So that's definitely one way to go. 
But what about your classes at the show? Like, are you going to be... Oh, my classes at the show are not going to be live this year. Sorry, guys. I do have YouTube videos if you look up Fingernail Fixer on YouTube. Coming back in with the stylus. Tiny dots. And then putting the lace in the flower petals. And really the beauty of lace is it doesn't have to be perfect. Handmade lace always has imperfections. So your YouTube classes are free, right? And they yes. aren't able to do the ones at ICE. Right. You would have to be at ISSE in person to catch my classes this weekend. And there is no charge to watch the YouTube videos. But you'll be teaching at other shows, right? This yes, time? I'm doing a three-day class at ABS in Chicago. And I will be in Houston. I will be in Orlando. So you can find me at lots of the different shows. And here was our inspiration. And how you can create that. Any other questions before we let you guys go? Because I know this is a work day at the salon, so I don't want to keep you too long. The classes at the ISSE show are free. Will you be in Chicago anytime soon? Asked Yukio. Yes, I will be teaching in Chicago at the ABS show. Which is in late April this year. It is in late April. Yeah. It's a definite change. I think they're yeah. trying to get away from the snow. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's always fun to watch the, the California people walk around in the <laughs> snow in Chicago. <laughs> so dainty. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> people say it looks good. Thank you. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that you took a chunk out of your day to hang out with me at the Nails Magazine offices. I hope these Valentine's ideas give you some inspiration to try creating things with a little bit of background or maybe using some dots and lines to accent what you're doing. Thank you. You Yay. have inspired me. Excellent. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.